I originally wasn't going to make much of a response to this video. Um, I'm not even subscribed to Sargon of Akkad. This video showed up in the recommended on the side. And so I was, well, okay, what is this? How, 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 is, how is he going to uh, tackle this issue? And then I came across this. You can't just paint them all with the same brush because of statistical probability. Well, I bet I could apply that to a bunch of other things he has said and show that he's being kind of hypocritical. But there were some other things in the video that started to bother me, and I'm going to address them here. So. The problem is it's hard to get mad at systems and institutions instead of taking these conversations personally. When I criticize the school to prison pipeline, lack of police training, workplace discrimination, or our court system, some people don't want to hear it or think about it. Are you really some sort of fucking idiot, Francesca? For a start, you are acting as if these institutions are separate from society itself, as if it isn't members of society staffing these institutions, and secondly, you are assuming they are all white, which they are not. So, when priests rape children, we should just look at those individual cases and not at the, the church? We shouldn't put any blame on the church for allowing those things? That's very interesting, Sargon. Let's use preschool for example. In a study done by the Department of Education, black children make up 18% of the preschool population, but represent almost half of all out-of-school suspensions. Basically, while a misbehaving white toddler might get time out, a black toddler is more likely to get sent home and have disciplinary action on their record. What does that say to you? It says a few things to me actually, Francesca. The first being, if you look into those individual cases, you will probably, 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 probably find that the actions of the teacher are justified based on the behavior of the child. You basically just said that when you see those statistics, it tells you that, uh, well, it's the families. It's the kids' behavior. You, you, you can say that, well, you know, if you look into it, you'll, you'll probably find... Um, have you looked into it? Did you bring up any exact cases? Did you bring up individuals? No, no, you just come up, well, you know, when I see it, I see this. You're just as biased as she is. If anything, it says to me there is a serious problem with black families, most notably fatherlessness. But fuck that, that's not important to you, is it? Is that a problem for black communities? Yes. Yes, it is. And it is something that should be discussed. But that's not what her video is about. It's almost like you're telling her what her focus should be. Now, I don't like her videos, and I think some of the generalizations she makes are ugly, but I would be a hypocrite if I was to state that in some way as if I don't make my own generalizations. So... Secondly, you are accusing those teachers of being racist. You are saying that the teachers in these schools, not any one in particular, is a racist. So, okay, which one, Francesca? What are the names of the priests who molest and rape children? Also kind of curious, do you know the names of all the individual Muslim terrorists out there? Or are they just this generic thing you call terrorists or Muslim terrorists? You know, a, a religion without people to follow it isn't really anything. But once people follow it, you have individuals, right? So why are individuals not important in that scenario? But if someone wants to say something negative about an institution, such as a government institution, a school, a workplace, etc., now it's suddenly so important to note the individuals that are in it and not the kind of thing that that institution statistically seems to be putting out. You can't just paint them all with the same brush, labeling them all as racist because of statistical probability. It makes me very uncomfortable when people use statistics to say bad things about a race. Now, if people are using statistics to show that a culture tends to be racist, 
I'm not nearly as offended. We could get statistics to show the racism that goes on between the different Asian uh, nationalities. There's a lot of that that goes on. We could show the statistics with that. But is that the same thing as saying, well, black people misbehave more, therefore it's their fault? No, it's not, and I can understand why people would get offended at that. Now let's apply what he just said in a more generic way and see what it sounds like. You can't just paint them all with the same brush because of statistical probability. You do that on a lot of things. We all do that on a lot of things, whether to a small degree or a large degree. It's nice to keep those things down, but it is something that we all do. It is a way of being able to describe a situation quickly. Now, I do understand that you don't mind if you take a long time to explain something, but the longer you take to explain something, the smaller the audience that is going to listen that could actually learn something from it, rather than just confirming things that they already believe. You know, when someone finds a way to explain something with fewer words, they're going to be able to reach more people. Now, you can be mad at them for wanting to do that. You can be mad at a lot of places for wanting to do that. But I have not yet seen you get mad when the right does it. You only get mad when the left does it. And so that's kind of frustrating. But overall, people have a short attention span. You can't just paint them all with the same brush because of statistical probability. Ew. For journalists who investigate these kinds of stats, they reach the conclusion that these suspensions are tied to teacher bias. I think calling them journalists is rather generous, don't you, Francesca? So they're only journalists if they come to the same conclusions as you do. The journalists can actually look into all these cases, come up with, with that as the answer, but they're not real journalists because they didn't just hear the statistics and say, oh, well, it must be black people's fault, right? I would suggest maybe radical left-wing ideologues, possibly activists, if I was feeling generous. You see, this is why some people say that reality has a liberal bias. Because in contrast to what a lot of people seem to be shoving forth on a regular basis, people like you, um, anything that actually represents reality more is to the left. So it must be some left-wing conspiracy, or it must be some, you know, leftists can't see reality in any way. They, they, they can't look at statistics and come, with a, come up with a reasonable conclusion. The only reasonable conclusion is that it's black people's fault, right? It's black people's fault, it's gay people's fault, it's women's fault. It's all their fault. Don't ever point at the uh, white cisgender straight males don't ever point your finger at them don't don't do it don't point your finger at them you know because that would be regressive and pussified and the majority never uh, oppresses the minority now granted the majority doesn't always oppress the minority and that's what some of these uh, SJW, if that's what you want to call them, uh, sociology uh, uh, fanboys seem to shove forth a lot. You know, oh, if you're not oppressed, then you're the oppressor. And the majority is often the oppressor, so the majority are oppressors by nature. Yeah, that's a fucked up thing for people to shove forth, and they do shove this forth. But you're doing the opposite. And that sucks, too. Just because someone is biased doesn't mean they are a racist, Francesca. It depends on what the bias is. If it's a bias against gay people, then I would say that that's homophobic. If it's a bias against someone for their race, I would say that's racist. Um, so you're right, a, a bias doesn't necessarily mean racism. A bias means something, you know, there's going to be a word associated with whatever it is the bias is against. There's going to be a word for it, or maybe if there isn't, you know, if it has to do with you have a bias against certain kinds of pens or something, then then yeah, I mean, but uh, 
If it's a bias against race, then yeah, that's racism. That's racist. And fixing this is even more complicated, including allocating tons of money towards teacher training, childcare resources, and a million other things. Take note, Sargon, she said childcare resources. Think about that for a moment, okay? I think she acknowledges some of the problems that are in black communities, that are in poor communities. I think she's acknowledging that, but you don't want to acknowledge that she has acknowledged that, and we'll see that in just a moment. Like mandatory social justice re-education camps, right, Francesca? You fucking lunatic. I mean, you'd think that they would try not to hire teachers with an obvious racial bias. Do you think when someone is applying for a job and is going through an interview, do you think that they're going to show their racial bias, or do you think they're going to try to hide it? Um, just in general, when one thinks about professionality, you try to remove all biases. So... <laughs> What needs to happen is there needs to be some standards in place that can try to figure out whether or not uh, there is some bias going on with the way the teachers are doing things. That's what needs to be implemented. But, well, you know, they, they, sh they should already be hiring uh, people that, that aren't biased anyway, so shut up. Well, there are more answers to this. Okay, I agree that the way that Francesca, Francesca is going about this is kind of dumb, and I think some of the uh, generalizations she makes are pretty ugly, but she's also trying to bring up some points, and I think there are some things that, I mean, I think there's things that you bring up, but there's things that she brings up that could build a further conversation so we can maybe actually get some answers to some of these problems. Now, if you're just too busy picking apart what she says in order to say that there isn't a problem because it's all black people's fault, then, you know, well... <laughs> but according to you, they, they don't care, and so they've staffed all of the schools and universities and whatnot with, with a bunch of racists. That's terrible. You don't know any of these people. You probably can't name a single teacher by name, at all, unless it's one you went to school with. Can you name the names of the priests who have raped children without looking it up? The problem ends up being in the institutions that allow these things to occur. It's not like those priests were going around saying, Hi! Hi, I rape children. Put me in a high position. I mean, that's not how that goes. And, you know, teachers can be really good teachers, but they'll have some really heavy biases that can affect the way that they teach, even though for all intents and purposes, they're decent teachers. You know, how can we do things to reduce the negative effects of biases? Because, I mean, all in all, we all are biased. And I know that you're certainly not going to point the finger at any individual teacher and say that this teacher is a racist. Because what you're talking about is total fucking horseshit, Francesca. Ah, so it's the argument of, unless you can name names, it doesn't happen. This kind of reminds me of uh, that, uh, uh, that lady who... Lady? <laughs> who was making a big deal about humongous. What's your name? 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 Right? Because, you know, if you can't, if you can't give the name, then it didn't happen, right? I actually don't think that there are that many racist teachers. I don't think there are that many racists. But what do we put in place for the ones that are? What can we do to stop the negative effects of the ones who are? That's because these issues are bigger than individuals. It's going to take all of us to advocate for change. Listen, you lunatic. I'm not going to advocate for re-education camps, even for you. Uh... I'm going to advocate for you to be fired out of a cannon into the fucking sun. Cool story, bro. 
It's also hard to think about these issues on an institutional level. And because talking about racism automatically makes a lot of white people uncomfortable, they sometimes begin to think they're being personally attacked or blamed. <laughs> Don't be mad at me. Be mad at someone else for the things I'm doing and saying. I mean, it's not like we should be holding individuals accountable for the things they do. You mean like Ponage channels? A classic example is the bias associated with drug use. White people use drugs at similar rates as black people, but black people are much more likely to go to jail for drug usage because of the way we structure our policing practices. Because of how we structure our policing practices. So, not because of racism. There's even bias in the political language we use to describe the issue. In the 80s, when crack became a huge problem, we had the war on drugs. But now with the prescription meds epidemic, which is largely affecting white communities, we're actually calling it what it is, an opioid epidemic. Did you just compare a government campaign against addictive illegal drugs to the current issue with legal pharmaceuticals that also happen to have addictive properties? Yes, she did. Do you have a problem with that? Do you not realize there is a pharmaceutical drug trafficking uh, epidemic going on? Do you not know anything about that? Are you that uneducated? Are you that unknowledgeable? Are, or are you that stupid? Or is this one of those retarded arguments where you're saying that, well, because street drugs are illegal, that makes them much worse? I mean, do you... Do you, do you think that this is this is a racial issue? Is there a way that she can bring up any of this without you just being a complete and total contrarian because you can't stand her? If the discussions were about what policies were needed and what our political leaders could do to help kids stay in school and prevent citizens from being murdered by the police. Oh yeah, they never discussed that. They never tried to do anything of the sort. The politicians, you gotta remember, they are racist. If the politicians aren't doing a damn thing to curb this, and they know that it's a problem, doesn't it seem like people could interpret that as a form of racism? Now, maybe it's not directly racism. Maybe they just don't know what to do about the problem. But can you blame people for interpreting that as, as racism? Um, nothing is really being done about this stuff. And so they're actually in favor of cops killing black kids, and they're in favor of black kids dropping out of school, it's a waste of precious resources, isn't it? Because the entire government is run by the KKK, you fucking lunatic. Well, if we're going to go there, then, you know, anyone who says anything negative about capitalism really is supporting communism. Because there's no such thing as anything in between, right? Yeah, and instead of that applying to, I don't know, members of the black community, perhaps? You know, those kids who drop out of school, or those families who, well, I wouldn't even call them families, those people who produce hundreds and thousands of black children out of wedlock to doom them to a life of poverty and struggle are not doing the responsible thing but that, why, why would we expect them to do the responsible thing they're they're just black aren't they francesca they can't be expected to take some responsibility like i said earlier it seems that you just think that it's black people's fault there are no situations that they are in that make things harder for black people there's there's nothing that anyone is doing except black people uh, that are causing this. It's all black people's fault. And, you know, yeah, you're biased the other way. Your bias, when it gets said blatantly, looks just like racism. I wonder why that is.